In this episode of Negative Modifier, we'll be playing the game Delta Green. Delta Green, by design, tackles various mature themes that may be uncomfortable or triggering for listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Hey, it's Charlie, Negative Modifier's Game Master. First off, thank you for giving us a listen. As always, expect something horrible to happen to the players. If you're a fan, support us by leaving a review on iTunes. If you hate the show, consider doing it anyway and enjoying the fact that you've inflicted us on someone else. For the most up-to-date news on the podcast, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And with that... pick up things the next morning the sun is rising you've had your night at the motel it's been a weird 24 hours building imploded on itself tranche just stopped by you find that in the parking lot she's replaced your minivan with kind of one of those sliding panel vans you do like maintenance and stuff like that uh, again low enough tech there's no kind of high-tech aspects that could be infected in it but also new enough it's not going to raise too many questions if you will you got anything left to do in philly at this point or is it off to Virginia. Well, since it's morning and uh, we're kind of getting started up, I'm going to just load the van up while other folks are waking up because I'm guessing I woke up early because of force of habit. Probably. So, yeah, I woke up early. Force of habit. That's that's what I'm going to go Yeah, with. probably. Makes a lot of sense. So I got up early and I start loading stuff up into the van while I wait for other folks to wake up. Cool. Yeah, so when you open the back of the van, you do find that there are some cardboard boxes in the back of the van waiting for you. Okay. I'd like to go through the boxes and see what I've got waiting for me. Yeah, so the boxes are, for the most part, just kind of full of junk. Like, the top inch or two of the box is just kind of random assorted stuff one could dump into a box for cover. But below that, there's a collection of Virginia road maps and all the stuff you'll need to get anywhere you need in the Virginia and the surrounding D.C. areas. Again, because no GPSs, no phones at this point, given everything you know. A couple extra kind of magazines for the guns you have. A couple of what you'd assume to be clean 9mm handguns. Nothing super fancy, nothing as extravagant as you had in the minivan as you were warned about. But yeah, she's done her best to try and make sure you're at least a little bit equipped. Probably the most interesting part is it's got a replacement cash in this case. So it's, uh, again, kind of a range of 20 to $50 bills just in stacks. Older style, unfortunately, so I'm maybe going to ask a couple questions. But again, probably say about 10000 bucks in non-sequential bills. Perfect. Okay, so I pull the map stuff out and put it in, you know, in the passenger seat, and I finish loading up the rest of the stuff, and I walk back inside to check in on the other two. All right. Charlie, how deeply has Firestarter's alcoholism affected him, especially with the high dosage of painkillers that was given to him? I mean, you're not in great shape ever, I think is probably the answer to this topic. So far, we've been playing it as you're a highly functional and that kind of fireman policeman type of stereotype way on this topic so with that in mind it's probably not great then like it's probably a bad cocktail but again what's the right phrase how do i put this you're kind of used to functioning this way if that makes any sense okay okay gotcha i just wanted to make sure that it wasn't like useless in the next couple minutes or so for better or worse you've managed to keep the supply that keeps you from going through withdrawal up okay if you were to find yourself in a situation where you suddenly found yourself dry for whatever reason, then that will become more of a problem, probably. Or if you kind of found yourself experiencing a break that kind of plunges you deeper, then that will also be a problem. But yeah, for better or worse, you kind of had the rest of the cell around to kind of keep you in line on that topic, if that makes any sense. Okay. The fire starter upon waking will kind of greet everyone or greet everyone who's awake. So more than three, just. Morning, John. Uh, you see a newspaper stand outside by chance? Are there newspapers over at the hotel, uh, motel front lobby? Did it have a lobby? A check-in area. I'm going to see what kind of information was reported about last night, just to make sure that our, how much cover we were able to kind of have. Sure. Yeah, so first in a couple of newspapers, you'll learn that it's being played off as just kind of a building collapse. A um, old abandoned warehouse building has finally fallen on itself. Like it happens every once in a while, normally during the winter when kind of the weight of the snow gets to it. But maybe something just gave in and kind of just fell. Like they just said, yeah, it's kind of suspicious how like it really caved in on itself. But also, no one was injured as best they can tell as part of the cave in. So it's just kind of a yeah, another building in a falling apart part of town falls in on itself. 
Cool. So I finished loading everything up, and at this point, check to see if uh, Florence is awake yet. She's still just hanging out in the bathtub, but she's just laying there, looking at the ceiling. Okay, so I'm going to knock on the bathroom door. Just like, hey, uh, Florence, you doing all right in there? I'm fine. All right, well, uh, <clears throat> we've got the, the new vehicle loaded up, and we're pretty much ready to go whenever you are, so no pressure, but we're all loaded up on this end. All right, I'm coming. She'll get up and splash some water on her face and then walk out of the bathroom. Yeah, how is Florence feeling, I guess, at this point? Like, she has an added, I don't know, context perspective of Tranche's behavior. If the other two lack. All three of you have been on the run at this point, though, for at least a week or two. Like, it's time started to blur together type of thing. Like, you've been on the road. Most people probably assume you're dead again. Not saying Florence has the most to lose of all three of you, but she kind of does. She has the most remaining life in some ways. Like, how is she coping with this kind of prolonged Delta Green experience? I mean, when she walks out, it's kind of clear that she's tired. Not, like, sleepy tired, but physically tired from the this whole situation not her normal like let's go just tackle this and get it over with she's kind of looks like she might have hit her maximum sure you're god woman you look like shit as long as i'm looking better than you a really low bar yeah i know well i think you're both equally disgusting and ugly but we got a road to hit yeah um who's who's driving i'll drive you guys Florence looks tired. She needs to get some sleep. I'm guessing, did you get any sleep at all in the bathroom last night? A little bit. Define a little bit. A couple of hours. Okay. Well, you can ride in the front with me. If you want to help navigate, I'll drive. Firestarter, you uh, you still look like you need to recover a bit. So um, hang out in the back for a while. By the time that you had looked at me, I'm already like drinking from my flask. Copy that. Florence, do you know how to read maps? I We've been over this. No. I'm still waking up. What was, wait, you said no? No. No? Okay. Well, Firestarter, your shotgun, and uh, I'll wake you up when I need you to double-check the maps. Lawrence, you can uh, chill in the back. Sounds good. All right. Well, who wants breakfast? I raise my hand. Just me? Uh, okay. Well, I mean, I'd like breakfast, too. Just asking. Weirdly enough, nothing greasy, I guess. Just, I'm still dealing with whatever cocktail tranche and Florence had given me from last night. Or it might just be the alcohol that I just put in my body again. But you know what? Screw it. Let's grab some food and let's head to Virginia. Yeah, we're going to be uh, gas station grocery shopping for a little bit, so get used to that. And I start walking towards the car. Sounds good. Navigating your way to Huron, Virginia is not hard. It's located west of Washington, D.C. by about a half hour. It's kind of that start of the rural parts of Virginia that get less attention because they're not Washington, D.C., unfairly or not. Surrounded by a bunch of national parks. It's town in decline. Like when you get there, it's not the worst place you've been as part of this whole chain of events, but you've definitely been better. It's a step down from Philly. It's definitely worse than Maryland. Maybe it's comparable to certain parts of Chicago that you were in, but it's a town in mild decline, definitely. Not as extreme as some other places that Delta Green occasionally finds itself, but could be better, could be worse. Large chunks of it are taken up by suburbia, but kind of that suburbia that's right on the edge of falling into being kind of suburban wilderness. Again, this is a suburb of Washington, D.C. technically, but it's also far enough out it's kind of its own thing. As an airport, though, as part of kind of it being at one point in time in the past, a lot more important than it is now. So do we want to set up camp? Or not camp, but you know what I mean. Find a motel. Are we just going to be driving around until we start seeing some eyeball graffiti? Or Well, I figured we'd get into town first and then scope out a location. So I want to look through the maps or any kind of local, local whatever the heck to see whether or not there's any kind of uh, discreet motels around, but not like run down, I guess. Yeah, finding something that matches that criteria is easy enough. It'll take a little bit of time, but. That's easy enough to find to make a new home base. Okay, how many hours are we expected traveling right now? Just so I know what time of day we're expecting when we arrive into town. It's about four hours, including traffic, give or take, from Philly to Verdun. Okay, so we'll get there just like around noonish, just before noon, perhaps? Yeah, give or take. Okay. That's kind of worst case scenario, too. You can probably get there a bit faster. But yeah, noon sounds like a 
safe time to say you arrive around. Okay, so uh, I'm guessing we're in the general vicinity of the town now? This is a town of kind of between 20 and 25,000 people total. Okay, so then we pull into town, and then uh, I'm going to just kind of park in an empty parking lot area. I'll look over at Firestarter, and I'll ask him, uh, hey, so uh, you find any interesting locations we can uh, set up at? Yeah, I think I found a decent spot. You're part of some sort of secret black ops shit and whatnot. Are you familiar with this area at all? Or? Well, yes and no. Can't really go into too much detail. You kind of have like a good vibe as to, you know, what like the local culture is like, right? I mean, I travel around, so sure. All right. Regardless, we should stay on our toes. I mean, given our situation, anything I'm used to, I'm definitely not trusting, considering that was... uh what you would call quote unquote normal. This guy's are knocking some company line out of uh, Agent Foxtrot about how the state does not operate on US soil or something. No, we're beyond that. <laughs> Fair enough. I think I found a spot. So I'll drive us towards the destination. What are we looking at, Charlie? We're just talking the motel, right? Yeah, we're going to motel first. Yep. Yeah, so the motel you found yourself is ironically the Green Lodge Motel. Green Lodge Motel. I thought it was funny. Like, a, <laughs> I mean, come on. It's green, Mrs. Pine, you know. I mean, there's, like, kind of funny, you know, that kind of thing. And then there's right on the fucking nose. And I think we're right on the fucking nose at the Green Lodge. Look, no one's going to expect it. It's just too obvious. You know, in a weird way, I'm inclined to agree with you on that one. Okay. I'll pull in and uh, head towards the main check-in office to see if they have any vacancies. How many nights you paying for in advance? You're going to pay for like a full week up front? You're going to pay for it on a nightly basis? I will pay for a full week up front. Yeah, they're kind of more surprised. You're like, I want to be here for a full week. They're like, okay. They're only kind of a one or two nights tops type of venue. But yeah, sure. Here's the room. It's the nicest one we have available right now. It's not great. All right. Well, uh, thank you. And before I leave, I do want to search and see if there are any cameras, electronics in the lobby area just to... As a general, like, just to know. Yeah, there's some general kind of better but not great motel close security camera footage stuff set up. Uh, give me a SIGINT. Okay. 81 out of 23 failure. Starting strong here. You feel pretty confident they're on a closed circuit. Wouldn't make sense to make this an exterior thing. That would also cost extra money. Yeah, perfect. All right, uh, so are we going up a flight of stairs? Is this ground floor? What are we looking at room-wise? The Green Lodge Motel is three stories. You're on the bottom floor. Their perspective being less people above and below you, the better type of thing. The ceilings are thick. The floors, not so much. Gotcha. All right. Well, I park to the closest spot possible where our room is and then just start unpacking and loading stuff up into the room. All right. Hey, Florence, you awake? Yep. Uh, we're here. Grab a box. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if Foxtrot found this funny, but I found us a place over at the. Uh, the Green Lodge Motel. <laughs> Fair enough. You're not laughing. Um, uh, it's funny. It's just not the laughing kind of funny. <sighs> I'm losing my dad joke capabilities, goddammit. I was never a fan of dad jokes. It's fine. Uh, whatever, whatever. I pick up my box and I start heading up to our room. Sure. All right, so what does the uh, room layout look like? What are we looking at here? They did say it was their finest room, so I'm curious to see what that sounds like. This is their finest room. This is a bit of a um, damning with faint praise type of situation. It is the cleanest motel you've come across, but also in that kind of a little too clean, like they are bleaching everything, floor to ceiling, and every time someone checks out of this type of room. It's two queen beds. They're side by side, a relatively modern, but kind of still pre-flat screen TV set up on the one of the dresser's office at the beds. The bathroom has stains, but someone's kind of bleached over it enough that it's sterile stains at this point. It's more just kind of enamel staining at that point in the services that can be. It's fine. I won't even call it nice. It's fine. There's no strange smells, no strange textures, no strange wet spots in the carpet. It's fine. On walking into the room, I'm going to put down my box. I'm going to unplug the television and just kind of move it so that way it's facing a wall. Sure. Home sweet home, I guess. At that, I will start unpacking the box and just start organizing what we got. While he's doing that, I'm going to 
am I confusing myself thinking that, no, no, we're just going to the area. There was no company specifically yeah, no company we're looking name. for. Okay. For some reason, I thought it was a company. Never mind. <laughs> you just have the town. Okay. So I was going to say, like, so you're here, you have a home base. How are you going about researching this one, I guess? Like, it's, it's a bit of a looking for a needle in the haystack type of situation. You've definitely come across some stuff in the past that might help you limit your perspective on this type of thing. But if this is indeed is the correct town, how are you going to go about finding where whatever this is is located? I figured we would do what worked for us last time and see if we can hit up a library and use their setup. I remember we did that before when we were looking for our DJ friend. Guess what? What are you looking for? I'm going to look for past and present companies that have opened up in that technology corridor or just like operations in general, whether like they're private or government. You know, sure. so they, they should have records of who was there before. All right. What's everyone else doing to kind of help this researching effort? You got to be joining Foxtrot in this. You got to be kind of driving around and looking for other stuff. What are other people's plans to try and, well, locate this thing? Well, ideally, if anything, I would like to put on kind of the, not disguise, but the air of kind of like techie, I guess. Gonna presuppose that Firestarter had previously visited San Francisco and like kind of the Bay Area to at least know what a techie would look like or have the same general vibe as as that. Sure. I will say that driving around the town, you've not gotten a tech company vibe. Okay. Well, so I guess I kind of like on this thing, do you want to research Duel's technology corridor as part of this? I guess like what it makes like, it sounds like you're kind of going down that path because there definitely is something to be gleaned from that hypothetically. That's kind of where I was going. I wanted to kind of go down the Duel's technology path and see if I can glean information either through interaction or kind of finding out where... I see like a large group of people who are kind of going that vibe, but if the surrounding area doesn't already have a vibe, then that's kind of a move. I guess I would be going into the library, looking at duels technology and seeing if there's any kind of mixer events or any kind of specific social events that will. Duels technology is not a single place. Think of it kind of like Silicon Valley. It's a geographical kind of rough location. Okay. Okay, cool. So look up information about, dual technology, the culture of that area, as well as if there's any kind of specific social spots or hangouts and stuff. So my search criteria would probably be like almost basic job searching sure. um, or trying to break into like the dual technology workforce. Yeah, I, I yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Joining the kind of working community network, if you will. Yes. All right. Makes sense. Lawrence. I think that she's probably going to be going to at least the same area as John. She wants to see if she can look through like public utility records and find any odd, I guess, residents maybe, or even buildings that are shouldn't have as big of a power draw as they do. You know sure. what I mean? Yeah, I do. I'm not sure how accessible that will be. But yeah, so it's off the library, it sounds like, for everyone. And I'm actually going to start with Firestarter's research on this one. So... Part of what makes Duels Technology Corridor, Duels Technology Corridor, and not something you've heard about before necessarily, is almost every company in it failed as part of the tech bubble burst. A couple of them kind of managed to survive through typically ones that had ties to the military or certain government contracting. But this really was the Silicon Valley of the East. It's just everything failed. The name comes from the fact that there is more fiber and Ethernet cable run along a stretch in Virginia than anywhere else in the world because of all the companies that popped up there. Literally hundreds of tech companies went, sprang up and died in the span of kind of a decade in this neck of the woods. It's part of why the town you're in is maybe not doing so well. But yes, there are hypothetically dozens, if not potentially over a hundred locations that if you're looking for an abandoned tech company might match the bill of a place that you could use to do something like this from. And I changed my focus from then general tech company into tech companies that are still active or have shut down recently that specifically focus and specialize in cable production or cable network. We'll address that in a second after we kind of deal with the rest of this. Okay. Well, Knowing what Firestarter's found, how are you kind of approaching this whole 
company search you're doing? You're trying to compare like physical lists of companies versus digital lists of companies. Like, well, what's the kind of thought process you're going through on this one? So my thought process was just to get a general idea of specifically ones that might have been involved with some government contracts, perhaps, or something along those lines. I'm just trying to get a general idea of like the companies that have come and gone through here to see if anything kind of just stands out. Like maybe there's an eye for a logo somewhere or something along those lines. Just something that would be kind of like, I guess you could say like hidden in broad daylight-esque signals, if you will. I don't know if you get what I'm kind of going with. So Yeah, uh, give me a search as you're kind of going through all of this. That's a little bit harder than just finding out that most of the companies went bankrupt. All right. 68 out of 62 failure. Man, bad rolls today. Nothing obviously jumps out at you as part of this. Like there's a couple companies that maybe feel a tad suspicious, but it's just a lot of companies. It's a lot of kind of one or two name companies like Embargo, Orbita, Osiris. Like it's lots of bad 90s and early 2000s tech companies where it's like, why would you name a company that? Seriously, why? Well, especially that Osiris one. Cairo Imports, anybody? I know. As soon as you said Osiris, I was like, mm. is Firestarter with me as I'm doing this research? We're all in the same library doing this research. On one hand, having you cross three libraries might make sense, but also I'm not sure the town has three libraries to set up shop in. Okay. I'm going to basically walk up to the others and ask, hey, uh, did you find anything interesting so far? Well, if anything else, the Duels Technology Corridor apparently has one of the longest, well, it's got a whole bunch of fiber optic or just cables. Like there was a lot of cable production or just it's directly linked to cables, I guess. I'm still trying to sort out all these details and whatnot. But if anything else, this is getting a little too on the nose, more so than the green fucking lodge. Interesting. Do you by any chance have a general location or like street addresses or just maps of where these cables kind of run through? Yeah, I'll go ahead and find out where. Like, I guess the cables start and end, if that's even possible, or the largest kind of collection. I'll start amassing a list of all the cable companies that are either still working or, if anything else, have just closed within the past, I would say, five years. Five years is a good window, or you think I should push it to, like, ten? I mean... Because there's, like, a lot to sift through. There's, like, hundreds of companies that have just, like, kind of popped up and died let's pick the first five years although now that i think about it hmm what if it's not company specifically and perhaps somewhere involving a data center because these fiber lines have to move through data center at some point like a server farm of some sorts yeah that more than likely is still operating like the old pacific bell towers over in la you know those like windowless buildings and stuff exactly shit Okay, yeah, I'll I'll start kind of looking through that. Okay, I'm going to also start looking through stuff like that to see if I can find any records of, like, data centers that are either come and gone or currently operating data centers. But they all have to be either server farms or data centers, not just corporate business-y things anymore. So I've narrowed down my search. Sure. Should we even start looking into almost, like, old-school phone operators sort of situation because of all those switchboards and stuff? Do you remember seeing switchboards or were they specifically servers last time? And so far, we've dealt with like what looks like server racks and things like that, and network cables. And so you figured, I mean, logistically speaking, each corner of the U.S., if you will, has massive like central data centers. So there's a de- central data center for the East Coast, one for the West Coast, things like that. So we just find if there were any of those major data center points here somewhere. Hey. I know this is a little bit more about your day job, but kind of cross-referencing your own history, do you know about any kind of large data centers around here, even? Because they did know us a little too well, if you get my drift. little three-letter word. (laughs) Well, you're asking if I have any contacts at the NSA. I don't think so. And most of... My stuff that I do is outside the U.S. I don't really operate within the U.S. Cool. But okay. All right. I'll, I'll drop it. I'm, I'll, I'll start looking up my stuff. All right, Florence. Still trying to kind of track down utility usage, I guess? No, I have, 
I have a different thing I want to do. I want to okay. see uh, if I can look through the old company records, the companies that used to be here and would have had government contracts. A bunch of them did at one point or another, yeah. Then companies that had government contracts that focused on software design, coding. Again, a bunch of them, like looking for specific types of coding or specific types of research or kind of specific types of contracts. I'm not exactly sure. Whatever type of code the uh, the seed would have been, it had been like the precursor to that. Sure, and I get what you're saying now. Yeah, uh, so reality is that the kind of this whole region existed technologically because of government contracts, basically where Silicon Valley tried to be its own thing. A lot of this was kind of Silicon Valley plus government resources and government kind of financing for technological purposes. The companies that have survived are ones you've heard of, like Lockheed Martin and stuff like that. And a lot of that stuff was and is still located in this neck of the woods, and they do make up a large percentage of a high volume kind of network traffic happening. The nodes that do exist that you can find or kind of might be aware of are probably a tad more reinforced and probably a little bit more shrouded in secrecy given their proximity to Washington, D.C. Again, like you're within a bubble where. Homeland Security and the NSA suddenly probably cares a lot more about how well that type of stuff is, you know, hidden and how actually accessible it is from the outside. ISPs are still ISPs at the end of the day, but you're close enough to Washington, D.C. where this type of stuff starts mattering a little bit more, I guess, is the way of thinking of it. Gotcha. It's safe to assume that, that almost every one of the companies in this kind of general area was there because it was hoping to either capitalize on government contracts in some way or was working in kind of some way that might be a favorable relationship with the government. If you didn't want to do that, you'd be off in California. I gotcha. I will pass this information along. You mean intelligence check, actually? Sure. Six out of 85 success. Yeah, so you're no conspiracy theorist or anything like that, but you would know that the modern-day version of the NSA and Homeland Security, for that matter, for a pretty serious part of time, recruited pretty heavily from tech startups. Like they were, in a lot of ways, it made more sense for them to kind of grab companies that were developing software or technologies that might be beneficial for that and just bring it in-house rather than trying to go through their own internal kind of development process. Again, like compared to the CIA and other more established, older government agencies, the newness of those two kind of reflects when they were most active and important in kind of the grand history of U.S kind of security and politics like they were more than happy to go oh we need some tech geniuses let's just go buy some tech geniuses the idea of hey some of these companies may have gone out of business because they just kind of became part of another agency or vice versa not a far-fetched assumption all right so you should look at companies that didn't go out of business because of bankruptcy but rather they got subsumed you would necessarily know how to do that but yeah the, the relationship is there to investigate hypothetically Gotcha. So cross-reference any kind of company mergers? Or ones with weird shutdowns. Weird shut. Got you. Hmm. Start looking through this as well. Hey, Florence, um, when you just started accumulating business knowledge, did it also start telling or did you also start accumulating like business strategies or anything else like that as to could you kind of like look over a list and say, oh, yeah, this is what would this company seems like something that could be useful, per se. I'm not exactly sure what you're asking. Has your pet rock made you a better business person? And can you use that knowledge to help filter through this through our lists? Well, my job heavily relies on bureaucracy and looking at funding metrics. So, yeah, I could look at company records and tell you which were profitable and which were not. So using the metrics that we have, can we kind of, how big of a pool do we have in terms of like any kind of leads on a specific name between the three of us? Uh, one name, you have more than any of the others, I guess. There is a, I think of as kind of an obvious thing you could check right now that might help narrow this down based on what you found in Philadelphia, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Is it a rave name? No. No. No, no. Something obvious from Philadelphia. Oh my god. <laughs> Troll roll intelligence checks you if you remember it. 81% out of 55% failure. 48 out of 85% success. 53 out of 45 failure. Are your starters just looking at Florence 
like he's a little constipated right now. He's trying to think up of a thing. By your kind of powers combined, you've actually managed to pull some of this information that it just occurs to Florence to compare two lists, basically. A digital list of all of the tech companies that existed in the area and a physical list, maybe provided by the library for some archival purposes, maybe across the kind of selection of newspapers, but a list that could not be digitally altered of the various tech companies of the area. And this takes some time. You're probably going over this the rest of the day. As the sun's setting and starting to get late, you do find the company name of Orbita. It only exists in physical records. It's not in digital. When you try to search it digitally, it never shows up directly. There's some references to something called the Free Net Collective at one point, picking up kind of residents in the old Orbita offices, but that's kind of all you find at initial kind of passes at it. You cannot find anything online, though, about the company Orbita beyond kind of its offices being repurposed for some activist collective, though. Oh. This is some Matrix bullshit, huh? Do we have the address of the offices? No. It's not that you can find digitally. How about physically? What can we find physical copies about Orbita? You can spend some more time doing that. They'll probably spill over into the next day unless you guys want to pull an all-nighter on this. But yeah, kind of like bringing you to probably, we'll say like 9 o'clock, you kind of track down and compare lists enough to figure out Orbita is a thing or a name you should be interested in. Do you want to pull an all-nighter at this point, or do you want to kind of come back the next day? Is the library open this late? Probably getting ready to close soon. Let's turn in for the night. Yeah, it's, we've got some info here. We can build off of that and uh, clean slate it tomorrow. All right, so everyone, as you're leaving, give me an alertness. Actually, what are people's alertnesses? Uh, mine is 73. 64. 53. How am I the least alert? Three of us. That's all high enough to notice this as you leave. So... On a bulletin board, kind of next to the entrance and exit of the library, you see a printer printed flyer for the FNC meetup, and it has a stylized version of the squid with an eye on it. The date for the meetup's long past, but it does mention that the meetup's going to be at Folly Lick Park like every year. I'm taking the flyer. Sure. As we're kind of walking out of the thing. Hey, um, I want to take this to kind of reference it later, but do I. Should I rip off the the symbol? It's different. Like, it kind of looks like it, but it's very stylized. Like it's got kind of a 90s grunge vibe to it, I guess. The flyer doesn't feel necessarily evil. It's more that FNC and the logo on it, so it makes it kind of inherently suspicious to you. Just paper, though, too. You want to do the hand test? Yeah, could you, uh, could you use your creepy detector on it? Sure. Lawrence will run their hand over it. Yeah, just paper, just a flyer. Seems fine to me. I fold it up and just kind of pocket it. So, uh, take out, take out for dinner, I guess. Uh, I'm not really hungry. I'll uh, eat whatever is convenient. I'm not too concerned. Should Florence, I, I know you're not probably really hungry at the moment, but you should probably. We've had a rough last couple of days. I'll think about it. All right, I can't subsist on caffeine pills alone. Just, just saying. As I get in the car, I'll get in the car as well. All right, and yeah, I'll get in the driver's seat and take on off back to the uh, motel. All right. Yeah, so the time you get there, you probably double back to make sure not being followed a few times. But yeah, I'll say it's probably close to like nine, ten o'clock by the time you get back. Any nighttime stuff you're getting up to or just trying to get some sleep and hit hard the next morning? I would say definitely get some sleep. Same for Florence. All right. Yes, I would like to get some sleep, but I'm kind of growing weirdly curious as to the change in meter of florence so florence has been kind of out of character in firestarter's eyes firestarter would like to study her a little bit more before anything else just to himself okay but otherwise i'm now kind of taking a little bit of a dossier of everyone well not, not saying that i'm like hyper suspicious but i'm just a little perturbed but firestarter will also go to sleep probably last Kind of like that shot of like it's the person sitting in the room smoking and pitch blackness type of thing as you kind of stare at your comrades going like something's up. Maybe. Probably just drinking sure. instead of smoking because I'm pretty sure he's going to get beat if he does that. I get that. Everyone give me a sanity check as you sleep. Oh boy. That's why I asked if we had a dream sequence. 42 out of 65 success. Have we recovered any sanity since we last? Did. We did. 
did okay. Forty out of thirty success. Woo! I I like everything else was updated, so I guess I'm fucking just all right. Here goes thirty two out of twenty eight percent failure. All right, so your sleeping disorder triggers hard. No matter how hard you try and like will yourself to sleep, your normal kind of low level dousing of alcohol is not really pushing you over in this case. Since you take the hit of the exhaustion, you gotta try and force yourself to sleep with something a little more substantial. I'm gonna dig around one of the boxes because I know for a fact that like Tranche has probably snuck something in for me. She may be a little bit of a hard ass sometimes, but I know she does care. Sure. But I think I may or may not be waking up drunk and sick tomorrow. Sure. No, and kind of like as you're going through all of this, what weighs the heaviest on Firestarter? Like, he has many things that in theory would kind of keep him awake at night. He's seen terrible, nightmarish things. But like, when he starts kind of trying to push all that stuff down, what floats to the top the best out of all the kind of bad things he's done or kind of regrets he's accumulated over the years? So... Here's the fun thing with Florence's kind of new outburst of emotion, specifically pointing back into that group hug or anything else like that. While Firestarter is like, oh, shit, this is a moment of appreciation and whatnot. It's still something that's foreign to him because he still kind of views himself as a failure. He's still hung up about his position in T-Cell as as Sigma Cell instead of Alpha or Bravo. And so he thinks that like he's not even part of like the the higher cells or whatever the crap and isn't in deserving of this recognition because he's still kind of fucked up about the fact that he doesn't have a relationship with anyone outside of these two. So I think the weird kind of despondency of Florence and the, the highs and the lows has triggered his questioning about his own status as a father because that's like a weird thing that he probably has and just kind of thinking about like oh shit he had a daughter he loved so dearly but he hasn't spoken to her sure yeah so i guess part of our sand check on this is so your disorder's raging give me a search see if you actually find some medication for this 30 percent out of 61 success yeah you find some medication for this so you take that That'll kind of force you down tonight, but kind of the last thought you have that goes through, it doesn't even come from you necessarily. Maybe it comes from the darkness of the room. Maybe it comes from the dark corners of your mind. Who knows where it comes from? And it's just, it's a simple one of, would anyone even care if you didn't come back from this? That's kind of the last thought you have as you uh, drift off to sleep. No sand damage for that, but your disorder's now in full-blown effect. Things are getting tough. The pressure is up, and... You wake up the next morning refreshed enough you're not taking penalty, but not feeling good about it. So what are people doing today? Get back into working into this company. Yeah, same, pretty much. That's uh, That sounds like a plan. One of us should take Orbita. Someone else should look in the Green Knight Collective. Firestarter's just kind of standing up and kind of weirdly rocking. He's a little sweaty right now, and he just kind of turns around, grabs the trash can and just vomits right in you okay firestarter i look over at firestarter and i say uh so no breakfast for you yeah i'm just gonna you guys get down to the car i'll i'll meet you there in like a minute or so as i kind of open up my flask and take a drink out of it real quick are you sure you're okay uh yeah couldn't super sleep last night um i took a couple of those and i just pointed a pill bottle that i just have on the floor um yeah i'm good i'm good i can work i can function i'm useful don't worry about it do you want something to take the edge off do you have stronger liquor or Uh, what what you got what do you got well between all of what i have and ron's just given us i can make you a pretty uh pretty strong something yeah whatever you can do to make sure i just don't puke at the uh library (laughs) I think we're going to be there for another long one. Uh, it might be something I ate last night. Who knows? Uh, yeah, can I put a cocktail of medication together for uh Yeah, you got the pharmacist starter. skill to do that. It will even them out. I guess I might, you also have a third kind of thing you unearthed yesterday, too, which is the um, meetup at Folly Lick Park that has passed. You do have a location that, in theory, something happened at relatively recently. 
I mean, maybe you could use some fresh air. Maybe you should take a walk through the park fire starter. Weren't, weren't we just talking about not splitting up? I think we should kind of do what we need to do over at the library. If anything, I could just use that spot to maybe take a quick nap. I don't know. Yeah, but I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I, I'm still good. Okay. You know how I know you're not good? Uh-huh. Because you've said you're good so many times to try to reassure us. Well, I don't know how else to reassure you. All right. But you need to, like, knock out in the van or something, dude. I I could be useful. All right. I could be useful. All right, so I grab the keys and I walk out and head towards the uh, van. All right. It's so library time again? Yep, library time. <laughs>